In this video, I wanna break down the 10 mistakes people make when they're starting a new business. If you fuck up any one of these rules, I can guarantee failure. You're gonna, you're gonna waste money and you're gonna mess up your reputation because you're putting out fucking failures after failure. My hope is that in this video, any of you guys who are starting a new business or want to start a business, you'll have a roadmap of things you can avoid so you don't meet the same fate. A lot of you guys may be asking yourself, why should I listen to this guy in the tank top? Over the last few years, I've built several eight figure businesses. I've been balling and shot calling for a long time. It's all been documented over the last decade on the internet if you don't believe it. And I'm not gonna try to sell you anything. All this game is free because I want you guys to succeed because I'm tired of being on the plane and I see my fans get on the plane, say that they're fans of me, and then go walk the coach. I'm like, it's like, God damn it. I wanna take credit for your success, not your average shit. It's back like when I used to have the fitness business, people were like, oh, I watch your videos all the time. And they were fat. I'm like, hey asshole, don't fucking blame me for this shit you call a physique. <laughs> I am not responsible for that. Stop telling people you watch my videos, fat boy. I, I need you guys to start balling, balling harder. So in, in order to do that, these are the 10 mistakes you need to avoid when starting your first business. Mistake number one, trying to sell people what you want to sell them as opposed to what they want to buy. So a lot of times there'll be a business owner. You see, I see this all the time. I see a business owner and he has this shit he's trying to sell. And he's super excited about it, about this fucking thing. And he tries to offer it to people. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> they really don't like it. <laughs> and this business owner is thinking, oh man, I love this shit. This is the shit that I love. Why doesn't everyone else love this shit as much as me? Because it's an ego thing, right? Sometimes people, they put together this product or service before they even see if this is what people want. You need to think about it like this. First, you got to think about what, what the actual people want. And I'm going to show you how you can figure that out. What people want, what you want to do, and what you're good at. A lot of first time entrepreneurs, they only focus on this, what they want to do. Oh, I want to do this, or I want to do that, or I want to come out with this product, or I want to come out with this service. That's not what's important. What's important in the marketplace is what the people want. It's like, do they want it from you? And they will want it from you if you are good at it. And then the area where all three of these things align is where you need to be. And that's where you'll make the money. You have a lot of interests. Like this is what you want. You already know what you want, what you want. You got to make sure it's a product or service that people want. And a big mistake that entrepreneurs make is they try to reinvent the wheel and they try to do something that's so obscure or so different that nobody is into it. So a lot of times an entrepreneur will come to me with some idea. He thinks it's the greatest idea of all time, right? He thinks it's the best idea ever. However, he hasn't tested it in the marketplace. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll, I'll be like, well, who else is doing this? And if they say no one, that's how I know that this is probably going to fail. Cause he's not, the, he's not a fucking genius. He didn't invent some shit that no one ever thought of. Odds are someone thought of that shit and it didn't work. So if he can't find any competitors, then we go on Google immediately and try to find competitors. And if we can't find anyone doing this, or if it's a small amount of people doing this thing, I'm like, bro, there's probably a reason no one is doing this shit, bro. Instead of trying to find something totally unique, totally something that someone has never done before, do something regular and put your spin on it. Kylie Jenner didn't invent makeup. They've been doing makeup since the Egyptian days, right? There was literally Egyptians who would wear makeup. It's some old school shit. She put her own spin on it and she used her leverage in order to market it. And you know, she became a billionaire, right? But it was off some regular shit. You get what I'm saying? She didn't have to invent anything crazy. When I, I had a supplement line and it was very successful, seven figure supplement line, we had an exit and it, it did really well. But listen, we didn't invent pre-workout. <laughs> we didn't invent creatine. In fact, the creatine we were selling <laughs> was like super similar to all the other uh, creatines. Only thing that made it a little different, it was micro micronized, right? So it wouldn't be like sand at the bottom of your motherfucking bro shaker. It was super fine, but you could get that shit anywhere, right? None of our products were like crazy different than anything you can get at GNC or the vitamin shop. But we put our own spin on it and we had a unique ways of marketing, but it was regular shit. And the problem is when you do invent something, 
it's way more difficult because there's no game plan, there's no path. You have to blaze a new trail and you have to be a pioneer and pioneers get the arrows. Pioneers die. If you had, if you wanted to go from New York to California now, there's, there's proven paths to get there. The first motherfuckers to go to California from New York, a lot of them motherfuckers didn't make it. They didn't know what the climbing was like. The shit was a fucking nightmare, bro. Somebody else has already blaze that path for you right and you can just follow that shit and the only time i pioneered something i was one of the first people to do online training right i started in like 09 and we had to figure it out it was way more difficult <laughs> than it is for my students who i teach to build online um, mainly because i figured it out for them and they can just follow the blueprint and the game plan it not only did it work for me but it worked for like thousands of other students it stands to reason if they do the same thing they'll get similar results that's if if something they're interested in right if you hate working out you hate fitness then hey online training is probably not gonna be for you right but you a fat boy <laughs> that's probably not gonna work for you either right it's got to be all three of these things in conclusion for this step what you want to do is don't try to reinvent the wheel put your own spin on the shit i think especially for your first business you should enter a market that people are already in and if it's saturated don't worry about it if you are really good at it the cream always rises to the top and throughout this video i'll show you some more ways for you can stand out amongst the competition and beat them into submission however you got to make sure you avoid mistake number two trying to be everything to everyone here's an example let's say there's two doctors one doctor just a general doctor general practice maybe he works at the urgent care or something you can go see him if you hurt your leg you got a cold or an std you know what i'm saying he's gonna help you out he's gonna be there for you you know what i'm saying no matter what then you got another doctor he is a heart surgeon who gets paid more yeah the heart surgeon right because he's a specialist right he's a specialist specialists get paid more than generalists but what i see a lot of entrepreneurs try to do what they do is they say, hey, man, they try to be everything to everyone, All right? So, okay, hold on, give me a second. I'm gonna draw some people for this example. I know I'm an amazing artist. Just try to relax about it. I don't need all that, all the, the praise from my art skills. Maybe it's some people, different people like different things, right? This guy, he likes motherfucking triangles. This guy is into squares. This nigga fucks with trapezoids. <laughs> And this motherfucker, all he really fuck with is octagons. Like he'll fuck with a fucking square if he got to, but his shit is octagons. So <laughs> the fucking amateur ass entrepreneur, he sees this and then he's like, oh man, you niggas like shapes. <laughs> Yo, I got this fucking thing. Wait till you see this. Here's what I'm going to do. Listen, I got this idea. I'm going to come out with this product. It's a triangle, square, trapezoid. <laughs> octagon thing man they gotta love that it's all of it you know what i'm saying and i'll throw in some rectangles and shit too if they want that this guy's thinking hey man now i can sell to all these people i can sell to everyone but the problem is now the shit is diluted because now he's selling all this shit but if i come through and i'm like yo homie yo you fuck with these trapezoids you fucking with trapezoids like that's your shit Psst. yo i am the best at making trapezoids like yeah that other nigga he got trapezoids but his shit <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, you, listen, you can fuck with him if you want, man, but I am the trapezoid master. All I do is make trapezoids. I've been making trapezoids for the last 15 years. Matter of fact, here's some testimonials from my trapezoid customers, man. These other people just like you who love trapezoids and they don't really fuck with the other shapes like that. And listen to them. Hey, man, I bought Brandon's trapezoids and those... <laughs> I bought Brandon's trapezoids and my life changed, man. When you're saying that just saved my marriage. My kids are going to better schools, man. My family respects me now. And the other dude is like, yeah. then I show him another testimony, man. Listen to listen to Demarcus from Detroit, Michigan. And he's like, yeah, man, I seen them trapezoids. And I was like, nah, you know, I was looking for a trapezoid. And then these other niggas, you know, they do all types of shit, man. But when I got Brandon's trapezoids, oh shit, man, shit was crazy. And then you see this, you the trapezoid, you the trapezoid nigga, and you like, yo, shit, that other dude make trapezoids, but yo, Brandon's trapezoids? <laughs> I mean, don't nobody do it like him. And this dude's trapezoids may be good, man, but he don't specialize in it, you know what I'm saying? Who are you gonna go with if you the trapezoid? Just think about it. The one who specializes or the one who's who got all types of shapes? Of course you're gonna go to the, the specialist. Now you can't sell to everyone, but you don't need to sell to everyone to make a bunch of money. You gotta be a specialist. Specialists always make more money. Let me give you an example. You don't even buy everything from everyone. You probably have some sneakers and you probably have a suit. 
that you can wear you probably wear your suit to, to weddings graduations or court do you want to buy a suit made by nike no <laughs> now i'm sure nike has the technology to make a good suit i'm confident they can pull it off right but you don't want a suit from from fucking nike you want jordans and black air force ones from nike like me i mean listen you want your suit to come from motherfuckers who specializes in suits you don't you want the doctor who's helping people with strep throat ear infections and chlamydia you want that same guy doing lasik eye surgery on you even if you can i'm fixing this kid's broken bone today uh i'm giving this person a prescription for uh, his syphilis and uh, I think I can squeeze you in for a laser eye surgery later. Nah, man, if I'm getting eye surgery, I want the motherfucker who only been doing eye surgery for the last 20 years. He specializes in it. That's all he does. He's perfected his method because this may come as a surprise to a lot of y'all, but I really fuck with my eyes and I enjoy seeing shit. I would like to do it indefinitely. So I don't want to put it at risk at all. Even if the regular doctors say, hey man, I give you a deal on your eye surgery man you know what i'm saying no nigga i don't want no half off budget eye surgery <laughs> in fact i want to pay for the best eye surgeon <laughs> specialists get paid more but there's another thing you don't understand when this trapezoid guy sees you he can't price shop because you are the specialist in trapezoids <laughs> but this guy the thing about this guy it's probably a bunch of him who just fuck with shapes but who fucks with just trapezoids man nobody man however you gotta make sure you avoid the next mistake an entrepreneur make is not having a usp and the usp stands for unique selling proposition let me show you what that means we already established that you have to have a niche right you got to be a specialist so you want to think about who you're trying to sell to again you don't want to be everything to everyone who do you want to sell to right and then what problem are you gonna solve for them, right? Because business is just problem solving. Every product or service is bought to solve a problem. I needed a wireless mouse so I can control the computer while I'm making these videos and Logitech solved that problem for me. I needed a bunch of HD cameras, 4K cameras to, to film these videos and Sony solved that problem for me, right? All businesses, all they do is solve problems and people exchange currency for that, right? So what problem are you trying to solve? The grocery store solves the problem of being able to get food without having to grow it or kill it. It's just there for you. Somebody already grew it and killed it for you. And our example before, our who was the guy who loves trapezoids and we were ignoring everyone else. We were ignoring all these other shake motherfuckers. And the problem we were solving for him is he wanted the best trapezoids around and we solved that problem for him. Now, the unique selling proposition means how are you solving that problem? What do you do that makes you stand out? For example, when I first started my online fitness business, uh, I was focusing on on young men and I only focused on men man, and not, not that I have anything against women. It's just you know difficult to market to, to both genders simultaneously. Right. That's why there's Old Spice deodorant and there's Shore deodorant, right? Shore's for ladies, Old Spice for the dudes. It's made by the same company, but they put it out on a different brand because it's difficult to market to both genders, right? Simultaneously, unless you have a multi-billion dollar budget. So men, and the problem I saw for them is they wanted to get ripped. It wasn't guys who wanted to be pro bodybuilders. It wasn't guys who wanted to live longer. <laughs> like I didn't talk about that shit. It wasn't guys who wanted to lose 50 pounds. It wasn't guys who wanted to be pro athletes, even though I have trained guys in the NFL. I marketed to one guy, one specific guy with one specific problem, but I solved that problem in a unique way. And I solved that problem with a mix of the ketogenic diet and bodybuilding workouts. And now, now check this out. Here's what happens. I didn't have to invent anything new. We remember the, the rules we talked about before. I was I didn't invent no new shit. It was it was the same shit. It was personal training. I just put a spin on it. This works even now, right? Because now there's a lot of online trainers, right? There's tons of online trainers, maybe millions. But how many of them are focused on men who want to get ripped with keto and bodybuilding? I bet you can't name five. Already, we're just focusing on men. Boom. I'm not competing with half of the competition. But then it's not all men. Remember, it was young men. I, I forgot to write that, but it was young men, age 20 to 25. I mean, age 20 to 30. And the reason that's important is because your marketing, it's difficult to market to a guy in his 40s and a guy in his 20s because they want things for different reasons, right? So the marketing would look like totally different, you know? So I only focused on that. So, okay, so that's like a small, it's not all men, it's only a portion of them. 
and it's only men who wanted to get ripped boom so now it's even less of them so now i'm only focused on a small percent of the population but then it's the men who wanted to do it with a mixture of keto and bodybuilding which was my secret sauce that's only like a sliver of this population my grad this graph is the worst one i've ever made hands down <laughs> but I only focus on a small segment of the population, like right, this little sliver right here. But here's the thing, when this guy who wants, when he's helped with this problem and he wants it done this way, when he finds me, he can't price shop. There's not much competition. A lot of people try to eliminate competition by doing something totally new. You don't have to do that. You, you figure out something regular that people already want, but you only focus on a certain segment of those people who have a certain problem they want solved and then you do it in a unique way. What does that look like? And that's what you gotta figure out. You gotta figure out what makes you different than the comp competition because you don't wanna compete with people on price. You wanna compete on your unique way of doing something, but it's gotta be something they already want done, right? Don't try to invent some shit. <laughs> Just do the thing in a unique way. For example, uh, my boy Ryan McGinn, he started a video agency where he does videos for content creators and influencers. Instead of being like everyone else, every other video person, he knew it'd be difficult for him to compete with them. So he focused just on short form content, mostly TikTok, YouTube shorts and reels. That's all he makes. He won't make no commercials for you. He won't make no long form content for you. All he does is short form video, right? So he films and edits and produces my YouTube shorts, my TikToks and my Instagrams, and they've been doing really well. And he does the same thing for Grant Cardone and some other influencers, I don't know how much, because he specializes in that, he can charge a premium, only does this one thing, and he's a specialist, but it's not like some new shit. People have been editing videos for goddamn decades and they've been doing it for influencers for decades but he focused on this one thing and now he has a, a, a seven figure business seven figure video editing business that he started with nothing but that he focused on who influencers who have a business he, it wasn't like anyone anyone right who wanted to get who wanted to grow their social media with short form content and how he did it was focusing only on short form content for youtube shorts tiktok and instagram reels a million dollar business right there so how can you make your shit unique in that way however there's a risk and that is mistake number four trying to be too different right there <laughs> trying to be too different now check this out it's a spectrum so we have normal and then we have wacky <laughs> wacky all right most of you guys and some of you girls watching this y'all like titty I know I've been a big fan. Listen, the first thing I ever ate came out of a titty. <laughs> Titties have been nothing but good to me my whole life. So I grew an, an affinity towards them. Normal, titties, normal. Everyone likes them, everyone loves them. But you may be thinking, man, yo, how do I make myself different? Man, I gotta come out with something so different, man. You know what? I ain't never seen this. Wait till they see this. <laughs> Three titties. <laughs> <laughs> right that's wacky when you go too different <laughs> what you really want to be you don't want to go past the middle <laughs> never go too different because the two different is three titties like you want to you want to differentiate yourself maybe you can come with some big titties hey <laughs> maybe that's what you do i don't know but not everybody's going even going to be into big titties some guys aren't some guys don't look big titties some guys like smaller titties man it's whatever it's okay just like this example. You wanna be different, but you wanna be something people already want. There's already people who want big titties. You know what I'm saying? And then some people prefer small titties. That's cool too, right? I think this is gonna be a very small demographic, right? This is when you can get too niche. <laughs> you get too niche. I just don't know if there's enough tri titty fans out there to support a business. I'm gonna be honest with you. You wanna find a way where you're unique, but not wacky. Don't get too crazy. Make sure it's different enough where there's still a market for it, but not so different that nobody fucks with your shit. <laughs> and the fifth mistake I see entrepreneurs make is they try to be too perfect and they wait until things are 100% perfect before they launch their product or service. However, the problem with that is quality comes from skill and skill comes from volume there's something before volume i used to think this skill just came from volume the more you do something the better you get at it i used to think that however there's a step i didn't take into account the step i didn't take into account was you need feedback 
right? Because you can just do something a lot. You don't know if you're getting better unless you get feedback. The same way you can stand the smell of your own farts, but everyone else thinks it's gross. You can think you're getting better just because you're working at it. And then you can start feeling like you deserve to be good, right? But you don't, you don't know if you're good or not. The market has to tell you if you're good or not. And this is how you get those people who are on American Idol and they've been singing for a long time, right? That wasn't the first time they sang, but they hadn't been getting feedback. <laughs> They hadn't been getting feedback and they go on and the first time to get feedback is front of the American Idol judges at the tryouts. We've all know how that works out, man. Some of them motherfuckers is awful. <laughs> Fucking awful. And you think, damn, how did this motherfucker think he was good? Because nobody told him he was bad. He was singing by himself <laughs> and no one told him he was bad. But once you get the feedback, you can work on the criticism and then build skill. And then from there, you get the quality. It starts with the volume. And then once you get quality, then you'll be excited and then you'll like want to do more because you're getting positive reinforcement. <laughs> it's a feedback loop. If you, if you wait till your shit is perfect, you think your shit is perfect. If you wait till you think your shit is perfect, you risk two things. One, you risk never putting shit out because you're trying to be too perfect. And the truth is it'll never be perfect, <laughs> right? But you're trying to, you're trying for this thing that actually can't happen. You also run the risk of you believing it's perfect or believing it's really good without the market back in step one it doesn't matter if you think it's good it matters what the market thinks so you could think it's really great and your opinion is your opinion i can play you my favorite song and you can think it's trash right and we're both right opinions are subjective but the market will tell you what it thinks and it's only the market opinion who it matters it doesn't matter what you think about it it matters what the market thinks about it because the market is what's going to exchange currency for and as a business you have to get people to exchange currency for your goods and service or else you don't have a business you have a hobby and if it's a hobby then you, you can skip all this because you don't need the feedback but if it's a business you need the feedback you you make it better based off what, what the feedback you get then you make it better and then you do more of it we've seen this movie before a lot of us have iphones everyone else is a dork I, I mean, I'm just playing. I used to have Androids. Uh, I used to love them until until the notes were blowing up on planes. <laughs> and because I'm a frequent flyer, I had to switch phones. Anyway, when the iPhone first came out, it kind of sucked, bro. It, I mean, it was cool and shit, but it didn't have copy and paste. It didn't have HD video. It wasn't perfect. But what they did was they put it out. People got excited about it because it was unique, right? But it wasn't perfect. They got the feedback and what happens? They keep improving it. The new one that's out now is way different than the iPhone one. It's way different and way better because based off the feedback, they get better at making things. They learn what they're doing. Then they can produce quality. The, the irony is you're waiting for shit to be perfect, but it's only going to get perfect from the feedback. The feedback is what's going to get you closer to perfection. The next mistake I see entrepreneurs make is they spend time thinking about stupid shit. <laughs> Let me explain. On this graph, we have I mean, shit that makes money. That's at the top. Shit that makes money. At the bottom is that don't. <laughs> and then we have on this axis, we have fun shit. And then we have boring shit. Now, you want to kind of stay away from everything on the bottom of this graph. <laughs> you know, you only want to do the things that are on the top of this graph or at least focus on them. Right. However, obviously, however, there's some shit in this quadrant that I see entrepreneurs fucking with a lot. And they spend a lot of time on it. And these things are logos, <laughs> company names, you know, bullshit like that. First of all, the, the company name. I've seen people sit around, sit around debating for fucking weeks or months about what's their fucking name of their company's gonna be. It doesn't matter. I know you think it matters. I mean, a good name is worse than a bad name, but it doesn't matter. What the fuck is a Celsius? Who cares, right? <laughs> My computer is called Apple. It makes sense to you now because you grew up with it, but it's a fruit. Imagine you never heard of Apple before. And I said, hey man, I'm gonna name my computer company after a fruit. I said that shit with a straight face. You'd be like, nah, that ain't it, player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That ain't it. Nobody gives a fuck. What's a Google? Nothing. It's a collection of fucking random syllables. I've seen companies spend so much time on this. Or logos. Hey, man, I'm a multi-millionaire. What's my logo? Do you know? No. Do you care? No. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I mean, a good logo is better than a bad logo, but a good logo is not going to make, make you money, man. No one gives a fuck about your logo. No one gives a fuck about your company name. If you are selling Bibles, then you don't want your name, your company name to be Big Titty Bible Company. 
as long as it's not egregious, it doesn't really fucking matter. People only want to do the shit that's on the fun side, but the fun side is rarely in this category. This is where people don't want to do and they need to do. Sales acquisition, customer acquisition strategies. Like how are you going to make sale? Customer acquisition strategies, client retention, accounting. You know what I'm saying? This is the shit you need to be focused on, not your fucking logo dip shit. This is what you need to be focused on, the shit to make you money, but no one wants to focus on this. I've seen people spend months on a name and a logo, especially with my online fitness clients. Yo, they'd be so fucking excited to show me their logo. I'd be like, I don't care if I ever see that thing again. No one does. But I wanted to put it on t-shirts and sell t-shirts. No one's gonna buy your fucking t-shirts, asshole. Right? They want online training from you, man. No one's gonna fucking buy your t-shirts or your hats, dumbass. The reason we like to do this, cause it's this shit is ego shit. It feels good to have a logo and a name and all that shit, man. Nah, man. Focus on the boring shit. You'll make more money. The next mistake people make is they spend money on the wrong shit. I've seen people spend a lot of money on a fucking logo. Then they say they don't have money for ads. I've seen people spend a lot of money on fancy office equipment. I've seen this shit. Don't nobody give a fuck about your office shit, man. All your customers care about is how good your motherfucking trapezoids are, man. We don't give a fuck about your fucking desk. How to get, show me the fucking trapezoids, man. That's what we care about. Think about it. This motherfucker wants to buy trapezoids. Is he going to, man, yo, I want to get trapezoids, man, but I really want to go to the place that has the best, like the best looking office. Get the fuck out of here, man. All you need to be focused on, customer acquisition, <laughs> accounting, and client retention. That's it, motherfucker. Tell OpenAI AI to make you a logo. Pick the first one and let's go. You can change it later if you get some feedback. A fourth mistake entrepreneurs make, especially new entrepreneurs, they quit their job too soon. When I was building my first business, I had multiple jobs, <laughs> four in fact. And you know, as I made more money, I quit one, then I quit another one when I made more money, then I, I quit another one and I kept the last job. It was enough to support me until my other job was making twice as much and I had six months saving. That way if shit hit the fan or if I fucked up, I'd have a nice cushion. It actually made me more confident because initially I was scared. It's scared to quit your job and the only money you make is the money you fucking go get, right? Instead of somebody giving you that paycheck every month, it's scary, right? You stepping out on a ledge. But I was less scared because I had a safety net, right? Imagine you're walking across a tight rope. You want to do it with a safety net or you want to do it where if you fall, you splatter all over the goddamn concrete. You pick the safety net, right? Six months of savings is that safety net. I never needed it, but just having it there allowed me to be bored. I think I didn't need it because I had it, <laughs> right? Because it made me more confident. And then when I'm doing my sales and shit, I'm not all fucking thirsty. Like I gotta have the sale. Please, please, I trained you real good, daddy. I trained you however you want. You know what I'm saying? No, it wasn't like that. You know, I was able to be more discerning and you know and maintain the prize frame when I was selling because I wasn't fucking thirsty. It didn't have commission breath and shit. You gotta have that before you quit your job. Also helps with the next mistake people have when they start their business is being too scared to even start. Yeah, you should be scared if you ain't got no fucking bread. If you ain't got a safety net, man. Yeah, you walking out here blind. It's like having sex with a prostitute with no condom on, man. That shit should be terrifying. You're not even the first guy she had sex with today. Who's to say she let the other motherfuckers today hit raw as well, man? You should be terrified if you do that. You know what I'm saying? But if you got a condom, you got a condom, I imagine it'd be less terrifying. <laughs> People do that every day, all the time. But how reckless would you have to be to fuck a prostitute <laughs> with no condom? That's crazy. That's fucking psycho shit, man. That's what you're doing when you start your business <laughs> without uh, savings, man. But the, the safety net, it will help you with your fear. If you fall, hey man, everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be good, right? And then the biggest mistake I've seen entrepreneurs make, let's say they did start their business, they're running their business without tracking their numbers. They're not tracking everything, they're not measuring things. It makes you money, but it's boring, right? It fits into that quadrant and you gotta do it, but almost none of them do it. You ever watch Shark Tank and you see these motherfuckers get on there trying to get a deal and they don't know their numbers? They almost get laughed out of the Shark Tank, <laughs> right? You gotta know your numbers. And if you wanna learn more about that, I have a video all about this exact issue you go check that out right now.